Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Salatu vesselamu ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve men yettede bi hedi ila yevmiddin. Selamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuhu. This uh, video, or serial video, I attend to do in order to shed some lights in my books. And this has a story about 10 years ago or 20 years ago, maybe, somebody, after I gave a lecture in Islamic economics, in particular, maybe it was about the usury, they asked me, where can I find a book which I can learn about Islamic economics? I couldn't answer him because there was no book uh, comprehensively explaining what is, is, is Islamic economics. My aim for my book is to explain or to book a, a full uh, curriculum to what is Islamic economic for whoever wants to study academically Islamic economics then that book will be sufficient. Or if anybody from the public uh, here would, or would like to know about Islamic economic, especially in these days, the need for knowledge about economics in general is increasing by day. And Islamic economic as an alternative to traditional economy. Then my aim is uh, at the end, explain to what is Islamic economics. I have two book, one book in English, this book, and the, the same book but in Arabic language. And I find it is a good idea, in order to not to miss anything, is to go through the book and try to explain or give some idea or make it easy for everyone to understand uh, the knowledge or the information in those two books. I start this series, serial, uh, in English. Maybe if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helped me to finish in English, I will do it again in Arabic language. Then to start with, what is economic? We've got three words. Economic, which is uh, people use for any issue which has an economic uh, application, they call it economic. And economics is a discipline, it's a subject to study, it's an academic subject. And economy, economy is an entity, normally for the state or for uh, a big company, which has uh, enough economic system uh, complete to run its uh, management, you could say. I'm very careful of using words because I don't want to mix it between things. Anyway, people would, would, would normally, when you say economic, they have a fear. He says it's very complex and leave it to the politician or the people who's concerned. Although any economic policy or decision to do with economic, it will affect everybody. Then uh, we shouldn't fear. It's some knowledge like any other longer knowledge, but we are affected by this 
uh, group of knowledge, you could say, more than any other, then we should know about economic, at least a minimum idea. And that's why I'm, I will try to open the subject and make it as simple as I could to everyone who would like to know about economics. And as well, I repeat again, if somebody wants to study the subject of Islamic economic, that will be uh, a good way to follow these videos or to read the books. Then when you say Islamic economic, one of the things to explain is from the rival, from the opposite, which I would say here there's two things, Islamic economic and traditional economic. There's different, completely different. But no, I'm not going to say what is different about the issue of the subject because too many. But I would make it very clear about the source of knowledge. When you talk about Islamic and non-Islamic, there's a completely different source. The source of knowledge, when we say Islamic, is revelation, is divine, is specifically Quran, the text, the word of God, and the Sunnah, the traditional of the Prophet That's one source of knowledge. It's completely different than the other one, which is where the traditional economic comes from, is the human brain. People uh, have the ability to create knowledge, to put some knowledge together, with the life experience, we will come later to put some other different when we to explain science and religion. But for the moment, there is two sources of knowledge, a divine knowledge and a human brain and human experience knowledge. Islamic economics or traditional economic is a branch of human science. Human science, they might call it social science or sociology. I prefer to put it in general term, human science. I have my reason because if you say social, then you're talking about the social element of human being. I might say economic element in human activity has more effect in human life than social, or maybe both of them, but which one is which? Leave both of them and say human. And when we say human uh, activity, we'll come to the issue, very important issue. And this is one, the first issue I'm going to introduce, is a human activity. There is no such thing called economic activity or social activity or political activity or military activity or even education, education activity. It is, I call it, the unity of human activity. What is the unity of human activity? Since human exists, he does the same activity. He used to do it, he'd done it before, he's doing it now, he's going to do it until the day ends. But what about this economic activity or social activity or political activity? This is a dimension of human activity. Don't say uh, it's the same, no. It's a completely different and the implication is, is completely huge. There is nobody should claim that we used to do that before. No, what you used to do before, you are doing now and you're going to do it then the unity of human activity is every activity, every activity 
have a human dimension to it, a social dimension to it, a political dimension to it, a juristic dimension to it, an education dimension to it, etc., etc. Every word you might imagine as relating to uh, human activity is a dimension of the same activity. For example, you listen to this video, I'm doing this video, maybe, what, what are you going to call this? That has, uh, it's an economic activity, it's a social activity, it's a media activity, it's an education activity, no, it's an, a human activity. It has its own economic dimension, it has its own political dimension, it has its own uh, financial active, uh, dimension. Then the unity of human activity make each activity has a multiple dimension. And I think, I will try to stick in each video for about 10 minutes, uh, minus plus one or two minutes. Uh, and then I will follow the, this idea by another idea. I'm trying uh, for this uh, introduction is the first section in the book, which uh, has a lot of idea. What I'm going to do after that, I will name the issue, give it a title, and try to explain it. I'll see you for the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.